Hello. So how are you doing, Ariel? Fine. And you, Joe? How are you doing? Good. Uh, let me get you in here. Do you have your camera working today? Um, I have it disactivated, but yes, I have a camera. Okay. Okay, we start in about 15 minutes. Okay. Where are you from, Ariel? I'm from Dominican Republic. Oh, good. Good. Que bueno. Yeah. Si, atenemos charlas de allá. De Atenedo Charles de Walter Dandy in in uh, the Republicana Dominica. Um, we're trying to have a presentation here, but I I don't know if they have done. No, no, es por más no sé, no hay nada. Hey, uh, Jeanette me escribe, pero no contesta, no dice nada. Pero si tiene, okay. interés, si tiene interés, contacta me, okay? Of course. Who do you talk to? ¿Qué dice? Who did you talk to? Uh, varios. Jeanette es uno. Hay otro, uh, se me olvidó su nombre. <clears throat> varios veces. Ellos vienen y salen. Pero no dedicada. Solamente pregunta y sale. Ok. Ok, si tú quieres organizar, ándale. Of course. Ok. If you want, I can type my, my phone number. Ok, escribe. Ok, yo voy a dar uh, tu tienes su WhatsApp. Ajá. Uh -huh. Ok, dame su WhatsApp. Okay, you boy down what's up for me. But uh you invite uh my group. I'll put it in a DM. Okay, you boy down No, no, no. The cable car. Okay. Okay, it's an invitation. I mean, what's up? Okay. Okay. Do you open your chat? Let me see. Buenos dias. Good morning, Trung. How are you? From Vietnam, I believe. There's Ariel. Yes. Yeah, I've been to Dominican many times. Oh, where? Santo Domingo, El Centro, como te llama? La parte muy bonita allá. La zona colonial, ¿verdad? Zona colonial, yeah. Sí, me gusta, yeah. You've been here on vacation or? See, see. 
Yo yo okay. estoy dando propiedad para comprar pero compré en los Bahamas. Okay. Sí. Sí, fue a fue a puertas, ¿cómo se llama? Uh, Damana, fue a Damana, uh, yeah. Tashua, Tashua, Puerto yeah. Puerto Plata. Tashua, Puerto Plata, yeah. Y uh, Barranca, ¿cómo se llama? La parte muy oeste. La parte, pasar a Punta Cana. ¿La este? Uh, se llama ba... Déjame ver. Bávaro. Sí. Sí, va, va, muchas partes. Pero mira, si tú quieres empezar en comunidad de República Dominica, hay varias personas que empecé Walter Dandy Grand Rondes. Uh, ha tenido un, dos y desde la uh, pero si es, alguien está dedicada dos veces al mes, vamos a regalar un tiempo conveniente y uh, boom. Yo acabo de empezar un, un uh, dos charlas por mes con neurosanjanos de África que habla francés. Porque muchos de África habla francés. Estoy empezando run rounds en África en francés. Ok. Y hacemos en español también con uh, República Dominica. ¿Qué, de ¿Qué debería hacer entonces para...? Necesita arreglar dos, tres charlas. O, o yo puedo ayudar. Pero necesita... Necesita ser. Solamente dígame cuando quieras, dígame si tiene presentadores. Puede obtener neurosurgeons de Republicana Dominica para hacer charlas o cualquier, cualquier persona que quieran. Sí, voy a, voy a averiguar entonces. Ok. Ok, mi, mi, yo voy a escribir mi email. Here's the email, también. Okay. See, you'll put up a chat con su numero de telefono, ¿verdad? Yeah. Hey, what's up is muy conveniente. Uh, your WhatsApp link uh, is not working on my phone. No, oh, okay. Okay, you want to scribble and me what's up? Yes. Recibelo? Todavía no yet.
Yeah, I received a direct message. Okay. Hello, John. Hey, hi, how are you doing? Absolutely good, John. How are you doing? Good. A so, lot buddy, a lot going on, man. It's good stuff. Yes, yes, absolutely. Really, really, really good stuff because it took a, a while to build the brand, but it's paying off now. Mm. 
because uh, when I ask to, to do things, people know, you know, they know, they don't have to uh, figure out what I'm doing. So, how you been? Pretty good. We've had this, uh, uh, the Exoscope company over to Krishna, the Indian Exoscope company. So they were here for two days. Um, and we we were planning on how to go about with the future. This is what I'm presenting today. Oh, uh, good. So, you know, we're looking at things and we're going to have no patents, no intellectual rights, nothing. We're going to tell people how we're going to do it. So if anybody wants to do it, let them do it. So this is what we decided. We have to just show it. We just show yeah. it and see if they like it. Period. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's like, so it's like being at a convention. This, it's like being at a convention. You see some booths you want to go to. You just, most you don't. Yeah. So we've decided that no more intellectual properties, no more patents, nothing. We whatever ideas we have, open share, share it open, like like the Linux platform. You know, instead of uh, yeah, 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 it's been hung around. That was very influential. But uh, I'm adding channels when people are coming now more and wanting to put, uh, you know, uh, and you really, to maintain a community, you just need twice a month mm -hmm. to have some kind of talk. And that kind of keeps uh, that community in the loop. Right. Yeah, today we are today we are going to talk about uh, this concept, what this hyperscope concept, and I'll show you something about what we what we are looking at over the last two days. What we were looking at with this company from India, and looks like they're going to be able to do it. Uh, I mean, looks like very soon we'll have a scope. They've already made the first prototype, which is fabulous. I'll be. With Sampath, you know, Sam, Sam, right? So in August uh, 22, I mean, August 18 to 25, I'm at uh, Bangalore and we are uh, doing this meeting from Bangalore. In, what, what, in Bangalore, they're doing it on what? Yeah, 18 to 25, we are uh, dissecting the entire skull base, starting off from anterolateral, then endoscopic, then lateral skull base, then... Uh, we're going posterolateral, uh, pre-sigmoid, retrosigmoid, far lateral, everything in 3D with the exoscope from the Indian company. Who's televising that? I don't know who's televising it. Maybe I can ask these guys to, because it's in 3D and maybe if we can get, if we, the boys can get the glasses, then I can really show it in 3D with neurosurgical TV. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can be flexible and, yeah. and, and, and adapt to what it is, but... And they don't have to necessarily use me to do the Zoom. I can just pick it up from YouTube. If they if they televise it on YouTube, I just pick it up from them. I do that from the NSI all the time. I did it this morning. They had a lecture this morning live on YouTube. I just picked it up and put it on on the. Uh, let me let me show you. What I, I just give you an example. I think you probably know. But. Uh, let me just show you an example of how I can televise conferences, but not necessarily do the Zoom. Okay. Just a couple of days back, I did a NSI virtual OR on uh, ACOM and Eurism. So all the lessons that uh, people, the young residents, as well as the young junior neurosurgeons has to do about an ACOM and Eurism. In fact, we have uh, one on Monday, uh, uh, slightly uh, a complex aneurysm on Monday. So uh, we'll be doing it in 3D and maybe I can get the video, unedited video. Yeah, just let me know if uh, you want to do anything live. Okay, here, here's, here's, you see the Indian one we did this morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they have it pretty frequently. I don't televise their Zoom. They don't even know, and I just pick it up from YouTube and, and put it on the front page of Neurosurgical TV. So as far as that conference and on the 18th of August, uh, just, mm -hmm. just let me know the details. Okay, I, you uh, you want to start? Yes, yes, man. I'll be ready. I'm ready. Okay, here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Good morning. This is Dr. John Bennett televising for Neurosurgical TV at the home, Miami Beach, sunny Miami Beach. 
we have uh, another webcast with an old friend, Ike Sherian. We've done this for a long time, uh, having we started with Google Hangouts. Remember those days, Ike? Google Hangouts. Yes, yes, absolutely. And yeah, now uh, Zoom came along, which is a great, great platform for teaching. And so in the neurosurgery innovations series that Ike is doing, he's, today he's going to talk about the hyperscope. And uh, it's all yours, Ike. Welcome. Thank you, John. Again, uh, great to be doing a telecast uh, with you. As he said, I mean, I remember in those earlier days we were doing these meetings. You may probably rem uh, remember Manuel. Do you do you remember Manuel? Uh, Manuel is from Mexico, so he's my fellow. With you, is my fellow in Nepal. Manuel, can you? Yeah. Hi, John. How are you? I, I have met with you in Mexico one time. Yeah. Nice to see you, John. I'm sorry, bienvenido, so I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Manuel is with us right now. So he was with us in uh, Nepal, then I was with him in uh, Mexico for some time. He's uh, a neurosurgeon with the Navy, the Mexican Navy. So he's come to see the facilities and the surgeries out here now. So today we'll be talking about the hyperscope concept. So uh, let me just share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen, John? Yes. Okay. It's not on presentation mode. It's on. It's, it's not quite on the presentation mode. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So um, we're talking about the hyperscope today. So what is the hyperscope? Uh, so we've had uh, a known microsurgical era first. And then we had a microscope for almost 50 years, we had the microscope. Now the hyperscope is a concept. So we've had the microscope, we've had the endoscope, we've had the navigation on all three different concepts, you know, three different things. They all developed over the years. And the hyperscope, what it does is it combines all three. So you will have an exoscope and endoscope combination and to that you add augmented reality and you take out the eyepiece then you take out the screen and you wear these glasses where you will have the exoscope endoscope and the navigated pictures together this is the hyperscope so we talked about it first in this textbook this was unesco's digital anatomy textbook about 40 years back, we did this uh, uh, chapter. So we had with us Ibrahim Hira, Timothy Jackison, and the Ego Lema Maldonado, uh, all from uh, Hira is from Canada, Ibrahim is in Germany, Timothy, I believe, is from Sweden, and Igor is from France right now, he's originally from Brazil. So we got together and then we wrote about this, uh, we wrote about this uh, in, in this textbook. So first thing first, um, I wanted to show you a case. Probably I had shown this to you. What I wanted to show you in, in this point of time is the difference that, you know, we can see with uh, aneurysm treatments and uh, uh, anything with a new exoscope. So what is being used here is the AOS exoscope. So we are doing this aneurysm here. Standard technique for all ACOM aneurysms, proximal sylvian dissection after the... Um, so what I wanted to show you is... What I wanted to show you is this, this vessels, okay? The vessels that you will see, start seeing right now after the proximal sylvian dissections, these are micrometers. Literally, you can see the RBGs, you know? If you increase the magnification to a little bit more, you can see, literally see the RBGs on that, okay? These vessels. 
these vessels. These are the capillaries, okay? And that's the kind of definition you get when you're using something like this. And then the hyperscope, what we propose has a lot of digital enhancement modes where at a certain point you can increase the magnification, you can increase the stereo depth artificially. So for example, at very high magnification, if you're not having the stereo depth, you can enhance the stereo depth. You can enhance the, the way the vessel looks, okay? So you know about the Clara and Chroma picture modes in uh, st stores, spice camera system, like that, the exoscope also, because this is a digital image, it can be enhanced. And then the best thing is you can put a superimposition of the aneurysm on these vessels so that even when you not really dissected it, that's what I'm going to show next. Even when you not dissected it, you know where the aneurysm is. So this is augmented reality. Leica is already doing that. Science is already doing that with their Glow 800 technique where literally an augmented reality picture of the, of the vessel with fluorescence is superimposed onto the vessel so that the surgeon doesn't have to look to any other monitor and he can literally see the glow. It's already being done. It's, I'm not talking about something that is not there. So this same superimposition technique can be done in exoscopes very easily because these are digital images, okay? And now the thing with the hyperscope would be now, I don't, I don't, I mean, an, an inexperienced surgeon wouldn't know where the aneurysm is. And if I can color the aneurysm something different and superimpose on this, okay, superimpose on this, the inexperienced surgeon would clearly know where the aneurysm is and where is probably the rupture point, where is the neck, where should I put the clip, this is what is going to change neurosurgery for the youngsters, okay? Now, the learning curve, I mean, I see Harshad, I see many senior neurosurgeons here. The learning curve is about 10 to 15 years in neurosurgery. I mean, I started neurosurgery uh, in 2001. I was a consultant by 2007. So, um, you know, it... it it took me about 15 years to come to a level that is right now. I mean, what I'm doing right now is about 15 years or 16 years of neurosurgery. So that's what it would take. But then that's because we really don't, the skills are not the difference. It is the ability to visualize things, okay? The ability to visualize things. That's the difference. Where's the tumor? Where's the vessel, okay? Where's the aneurysm? Where are the perforators? This is what you get by experience. And this is what you're able to bypass, okay? So this, on, in this chapter, what we, what we uh, wrote about the hyperscope was that we're integrating the exoscope, the endoscope, and navigation. Navigation, which means it is not a 2D overlay. It is not a 3D overlay even it would be a VR overlay on the exoscope picture with glasses. So this is what we were talking about. So we, you could put in an oculus or any glasses. We would make it such that even the gaming glasses can be used for this, okay? We don't make something. This is exactly what I was talking to the Indian scope makers. We make this technology open and we make this scope much, much cheaper. So with the, the problem is when you make a concept like this, suddenly what happens is big companies get attached to these ideas and they make something which is extremely costly. So 99% of the world cannot be using it. So with the Indian scope makers, we, we thought, we make everything open source. We make the camera, we make the carrier, we make, we use some gaming glasses. 
I mean, something that can incorporate 3D, 4K and mixed reality, like for example, the Apple glasses or maybe the XR3 Warho, which is a gaming glass. So we incorporate all this, okay? I mean, the problem is these FDA licenses and uh, the other things. Well, I can tell, tell you to put up one of my fingers up to them because these licenses, there are people who are not operating with, you know, with trying to operate with cell phone magnification. And there are people who are sitting with these licenses, licensing and licenses and all that, okay? Where was this licensing when the first microscope came in? There was nothing, right? So, and with these licensings, things are not really improved, okay? Things have gone south, actually. So, what I'm trying to do is get these things open source, get a camera open source, get the carrier, robotic carrier open source, so many robots available. So we are going to tell the world, the young world, how to make the hyperscope, okay? You guys can make it or we can make it and give it to you, okay? We'll find out the cheapest way to make it for you, the best way, not only just the cheapest, but the best way to make it so that it would be better than any scope in the market. Okay, it would be more innovative than anything in the market. This is exactly what we are trying to do. We're not trying to make a company and we're not trying to make a monopoly. We're trying to break down all these barriers so that every single young neurosurgeon can operate with this. Okay, so this is exactly what I was telling you about overlay of these vessels, virtual overlay of these vessels. Okay virtual overlay before even the craniotomy, all right? So this is a picture of the surgical theater. And this is one of the, one of the, one of the cases that we'll be operating. And you see the virtual overlay, okay, on the exoscope. Now, this is just a 2D overlay. But what I am talking to you is a, a 3D, uh, not even 3D, virtual overlay so that even when I have dissected this part of the A1, I know that the aneurysm is shaped like that, okay? Even if this aneurysm bleeds, I can put on this hypervision and I can at least put a clip across here, okay? And, you know, the after the bleeding stops, I can perfect the clip later on. Uh, well, uh, I mean, I would... This is one of the end scope holders we just made. We have it in our theater right now, the same thing. We named it the uh, Sanma Santwana. So this is, uh, you know, this is an endoscope holder. This is, you can make micro adjustments, not only these movements, we can make the micro adjustments with these, okay? And it is dirt cheap, all right? Um, so for all the transnasal, for all the ventricular, for all the skull base work, for all the spine work, we can use this endoscope holder. And beauty is we can use it along with an exoscope, which we are, you know, we are, we have designed this exoscope. The prototype is already ready. Very soon we'll be working with this and we'll be sending you. In fact, the skull base meeting from August 18 to 25 will be operating with this exoscope. It's a 3D 4K exoscope, exclusively made in India, open source completely. So we're trying to make the components from different uh, different cameras. Uh, we are sourcing the cameras from the best sources, putting it all together. And, you know, there's not really a company. Sanma makes them, but, you know, it, 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 it can be literally anything, any company. So we find the cheapest way to put it together and then start putting in all these tech technologies to it where it can have virtual overlays, it can have x -atry. So uh, just a basic exoscope and an endoscope holder later on will combine it and then to make the hyperscope and, and, and you know, so that there's no company monopolizing like uh, Zahez. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sad, but I should name these companies, okay? Size or Esculap or Moller or Leica. No, no more companies monopolizing. These, you know, we will tell you how to assemble scopes anywhere in the world, okay? And then you can operate, you can operate. This is my dream. So, 
So that's the concept of hyperscope technology, sharing, and making sure that all the young neurosurgeons go to the next uh, generation uh, way, I mean, the next way, next generation of uh, operating with high magnification, high zoom, high studio depth, high skills, and technology. So this was what we wanted to show. Thank you very much. Okay, I thank you very much for taking the time. And we hope we get some interaction here. Uh, certainly an interesting topic. Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, Harshad, are you uh, available? I'd like to get your. I, I'd like to hear from all the participants who are. Yes, John, I'm here. Hey, yeah, Harshad, okay. good to see you, man. We'll try to I, get... I, I, you are becoming now genius. <laughs> sure. uh, Thank you. You, 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 you I, I'm sure you will operate at your home, and you'll sit in your <laughs> home and uh, let let everybody see the. And uh, you're coming out with some new fantastic ideas. And, thank you, uh, thank you. I, I, I must appreciate your efforts. Wonderful. Thank you, Harsh. Thank you very much. Proud Harsh. to have you in Maharashtra and India. Thank, thank you very much. Very, Harsh. very innovative. Very innovative. We, I mean, we uh, over the next three months we'll be trying out these prototypes, and I hope to share these videos, and I hope to help the young neurosurgeons all over the world to assemble their own scopes to start with 3D scopes to start with, and uh, you know, and then have ideas from everybody so that we all brainstorm together, and then you know, you we make things together. This is my dream. Wonderful, wonderful. Great. Congratulations. Keep it up. Well, you know, let me get this person uh, muted. You know, I, I always I always thought one of the main uses of uh, platforms like Google Hangout and Zoom is the interaction between uh, silos, between neurosurgeons and engineers. Uh, because I think it's it'll, it'll be, uh, of course, beneficial if engineers get involved in something like this and advise you what's possible. You know what I mean? I Yes, yes, absolutely. What's possible. I mean, people that don't normally come to talk to neurosurgeons can come on something like a platform like this and give you input on what's possible as far as lenses, et cetera. Yeah, so what we want is we need to collaborate with these young guys who has that, who has the spirit to change and, you know, who has the spirit to operate more efficiently and who wants to do things. We need to get with, get together with them and change the way the whole neurosurgery is done. This is, this is what we need to do. We need to have a team of these young, enthusiastic, hungry, young neurosurgeons, you know, and you know, who is better than you, John, to bring up, bring all of them together from all continents, from the whole world, okay? So we have yeah. Manuel from South America. We have, uh, you know, we have people from Africa. We have people from Central Asia, China, India, everybody together must get together and get these scopes done, okay? And we'll, we should help um, somebody is asking me how much will it cost to, to make a hyperscope well I'll tell you so we are looking at it with uh, Sanma so they're trying to make these things right now so a 3D 4K camera would cost anywhere near 25 to 30 lakhs which is uh, let's say about 30 thirty thousand dollars with the monitor okay and then we need a robotic carrier so we're looking at anywhere near uh, 60000 to $70,000 to start with. And then we add on things, it'll come to about uh, 150000 which is the price of a uh, uh, size Tivato, or not even a Kinebo, uh, size Tivato or a Lika second, not even the OH5 or something, but... Uh, something the second rate microscope so that'll be the cost and i can assure you the images as well as uh, 
the the ease of operating will be much better than any microscope so the only thing is we can make it much more cheaper but then it it wouldn't be very good so we we should not do that we should not go that way okay uh, i know about the efforts of manuel and other people trying to make very cheap exoscopes i understand that but i would not want to go that way i mean that's another way and it's a different way okay so for me i want to make the best scope available on earth and make it as cheaper as possible okay this is put in all the tech so that we are going to the path of progress not going backwards so my idea is to make it as good as possible so in fact the company sanma these guys when they, they came to me they told me we can do an hd scope i said no i saw their hd scope in chennai it's fantastic the 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 uh, the clarity is fantastic on a 50 51 inch screen it's fantastic but i still want a 4k 4k i mean i would even i was asking them this time for an 8k so that i can go with the magnifications of 100 plus easily so um, we are designing a scope so i am thinking deepak has asked me from india maybe less than 2 crores we should be able to make something which is mind blowing with uh, all the tech and everything yeah, with the construction of, of what you're talking about i it's a different world before like i mentioned before a neurosurgeon would just have to wait until something was developed now a neurosurgeon can can get hands on and be involved from the development because of this platform and i highly encourage engineers uh to get involved with something like this if you have friends of engineers getting involved at the very beginning before you just have to accept whatever they may whatever mm -hmm. they may and now you can be on the ground floor of the design and put basically what exactly that you want you know for the last one month i'm sitting down with uh, virtually as well as physically with five engineers from these companies and i'm telling them what to do and i am asking them to read papers and i am trying to get engineering and surgery together so they 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 come to my or and see what i do and earlier you know they used to give us a key uh, a, a key chain and then tell me put give me a key and tell me to remove the tumor with it and i would remove the tumor with it but today i can tell them you know that this this is what i need and they have engineering they have fantastic engineering solutions for this and another thing we are making is a very cheap fuser uh something like a tumor fragmenter we calling we plan planning to cook call it the scoop we already made it actually and you know it's extremely cheap and uh it's a mechanical way of uh, taking the tumor apart and i i suspect within about one or two years the whole idea of drills would become completely superfluous because we won't need any drills at all to break down bone we have this mechanical cuser and sanma is we are making it again and uh, it, it it's it's just fantastic uh, i would show the videos of it as soon as we have the first prototype i would show the videos of it and i will tell you guys how to make it you know uh, so that you guys can anybody who would want to they can they can make it we would tell you we we going to tell the technology to everybody and we trying to make it as cheap as possible so all these cues are this is a, this is whole idea of piezo uh, whole idea of mechanical cues a whole idea of breaking down hard things whole idea of breaking down tumors this is also something that we are focusing on and then finally now we are focusing on another thing this is robots okay it's truly amazing what Uh, robots in neurosurgery can really do uh, i know ganat was my very good friend and we've been talking about robotic neurosurgery way back from 2009 but uh, now what robots can do is, is is truly amazing and just not in the greatest ors or the most modern ors i'm talking about robots being able to uh, you know uh, buy robots in every single or in the world robots are only 10,000 to 15,000 dollars we need engineers to program them and help the surgeons in tasks in 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 very very selected tasks and 
no more would robotic surgery be something of hallowed, you know, very sacred and holy. It would be in every single OR. This is my dream. Well, you know, uh, I can comment on things like robotics. Uh, neurosurgery, not too much. But uh, I was involved a little bit with robotics, and, and I thought that there'd be no application to neurosurgery, none whatsoever. But look what happened in five short years. They have a robot that can play ping pong against a world champion player. Yeah, and, yeah, and absolutely. Maintain, cool guy. In a rally and maintain the rally. You know, it's incredible what robotics, how, how they can be precise. That's why I thought never will happen in neurosurgery. It's too precise, neurosurgery, but it is happening. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, you know, that's a KUKA robot. That's a KUKA robot. Yeah, I think, I think and, so. And, uh, yeah, that's a KUKA robot, which was playing uh, this world champion. I, I have seen this. It's 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 truly amazing. Incredible. So, um well, we we all have uh, now. We are all thinking about you know now with these companies and people like-minded people. We are all thinking about getting the robot to every single OR and changing the way. You know, we have tools from the bloody Bronze Age. Sorry, I mean from the Bronze Age, and that is how we are doing neurosurgery in most ORs. It's not about second world, third world, first world. We should change all that, okay? We should be able to get these, these tools to everywhere, everybody. And I, I believe these companies who are making things so difficult and these FDA policies making things so difficult are only applicable to certain parts of the world like Europe, United States and all, where things are different. It's a different world. For us, it's a very different world and we would... We would do this neurosurgery with anything, you know, and of course, as long as we know it's safe for our patient, we would do it with anything. We would break down all these barriers and we'd make better scopes than them, okay, because we are also blessed with a lot of intellect and innovation, innovative mentality, because it's third world. There's a lot of people with the fantastic innovative mentalities, okay, so... We are hoping to hear from all of them. We are hoping to hear from all the experienced people, like-minded, open-minded people. And th this, I told you, this is part of my dream. I mean, I started with cystinostomy. Now I don't have to push cystinostomy because the world is doing it right now. So I'm not uh, talking about, if you notice, I'm not talking about cystinostomy at all. I, I get so many messages from everybody about cystinostomy, how they are doing it. Sometimes I learn from them. But the, my next mission is to completely change the way neurosurgery is done all over the world. Move from this Bronze Age and even from the microscope to these new things and, you know, and do it way better than, and then don't depend on all these companies or think that robotics and all these technologies hallowed or sacred or only possible in these places. Yeah, you, you should know, get out of that. Comment, Can I have a comment, please? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, yes. Yeah, thank yes. you. Uh, I'm Dr. Najar from Syria. Thank you, Professor Ayab. Uh, as usual, you are fantastic in your uh, presentations. Uh, you um, you know that after two weeks, we, we will meet in uh, Istanbul for the meeting. of. There is one day for the future of neuro, neurosurgery. And all the talks will speak about Professor Yashar Gil and Professor Al Mufti and Ugur Tere and you uh, and others. And I have a talk or so. What is the future of neurosurgery? Should the neurosurgeon will be the disappeared as a person and a, a mechanical and uh, um, intelligent uh, machines will replace them? This is, I think, this is a, a far dream, and it's not a very um, ideal uh, idea to be to apply. Uh, to have the microscope, Yashar Gil worked for 50 years to uh, to us to learn the uh, work uh, workshops hands on and the cadaver and working on the microscope. Um, uh, my comment is: where, Can you how much for you for, for how long time you can uh, keep yourself looking at the screen and moving your hands in a vertical way? Uh, I work for, with, with endoscopy for the brain. It may be less than one hour for colloid cyst or tumors or in uh, hydrocephalus. But in the very long um, tumor surgery, 
it will it will be very difficult to um, uh, let's say coordinate between your vision and your working uh, fingers so what this idea how would this apply in the, this heteroscope and th second uh, idea about the prices we are now buying the second and third generation of the microscope of the used microscope what they call it furbished this is the only way that most of the centers in the world they did not have navigation on intraoperative MRI, intraoperative CT scan. So that if you have, and this is my presentation, the second presentation, that if you have a microscope with a high speed drill, you can save maybe 90% of all the patients you have. So this is a, a principal tools, and this is the simplicity of the neurosurgery. If we speak about a new a, a machine that would cost about 60 to 70 thousand dollars at the first generation it will take maybe 10 or 20 years to be um, uh, let's say uh, generalized in all the, the the centers in the world so what's your comments on that thank you very much for your time Jalal, uh, thank you very much uh, i i think unfortunately i may not be i'm not sure as of yet but i may not be able to come to istanbul i have to ap apologize to yugur and uh, professor yasa gil uh, because my father is not very well, keeping very well, and I have to go to him Sorry to have that, after yeah, the yeah. after the wish him Bangalore. all the health. Yeah, thank you. Uh, after Bangalore meeting, I may have to go to my dad, and uh, therefore I may not be able to attend the Istanbul meeting. But I don't know as of yet. I'm trying to decide. If this is a meeting that I really don't want to miss. And again, so you asked me what are the new ideas for. Tumor, uh, tumor removal. Let me tell you, right now, the dream that I have, the ideas that we have, we are making ideas for this. So let us say a petroclival tumor, which is one of the most difficult tumors, okay? We are going to have a two centimeter incision, precise bone drilling by, you know, we have this robotic company called Eindhoven Medical Robotics. So we've had meetings with them, precise robotic drilling, for the Kawasi triangle and maybe extend it a little bit after drawing it in VR. And then something called the tumor tunneler goes in and it, it takes out tumor so fast that, you know, within about 10 to 15 minutes, it'll take out the tumor on, you know, you, you, you draw the tumor in VR and keep the capsule away and Except the capsule, the whole tumor will be cored out in the robot working in all three axes. It will tunnel out the tumor just like something tunneling out a, a, a mountain or a rock, you know. So all this can be done very easily. I mean, it's, it's not something very complicated. And the capsule, the, the surgeon can dissect under vision and wherever it cannot be shaved off, it can be lasered off. And today, there is technology to directly radio, ra I mean, radiate it. Zayas has brought out this uh, intraoperative radiation. So we're looking at a daycare surgery with less than two hours where you can take out, you know, a petroclaval tumor under local anesthesia and send the patient the same day home. So this is what's going to happen. This is, and whether can it happen in other centers, small centers, uh, poor countries, yes if the governments get involved. Okay, so the thing is, we need to get the governments involved. And that's what we're trying to do it in India, so that first we get this kind of, this kind of technology and then get the government, government involved. Okay, so we are trying to get governments, we're trying to get, uh, is there a earthquake or something? Okay, so governments, <laughs> We're trying to get the governments involved and maybe NGOs, maybe other organizations so that we can get this kind of technology to everywhere. So this is what I'm hoping for, dreaming for. Let us see what happens. Well, yeah, let me make a comment. I about uh, you. the, uh, you know, Siemen, Siemens, I believe, makes a lot of robotics uh, equipment for cardiology. And they are shifting from cardiology to neurosurgery as far as yes. the emphasis. Now, these are companies that ha depend on what's going on. So they see a great future. Siemens, a huge company, 
for neurosurgery. So they must see areas that were going to develop. They, they know a lot before they invest billions of dollars into sectors. And they're down you know, the cardiology and they're upgrading neurosurgery. You must be interested when uh, last year I visited the Siemens Health Engineers HQ, their uh, headquarters, and I had a, a one day talk with Peter Size, who was the president of Siemens Health Engineers. And I had seen the Corinders robot, the, the robot that you're talking about in cardiology. They had just acquired this Corinders robot. And I told them about how much good it would be if we can get the Corinders robot in the neurosurgery, because for brain strokes and for aneurysms and coiling and things, because Corinders is not really equipped for neurosurgery. So they are truly listening to it. I mean, last year I had this talk with them and they're shifting to, uh, you know, they are now shifting to neurosurgery as well. I'm, I'm happy. I don't know whether my talk had anything to do with it, but now we're looking in India to look at catheter robots and, you know, to, to change this direction of the colanders cannot be maneuvered, but we're looking at how to maneuver this robot with magnetic fields, molybdenum magnetic fields and uh, paramagnetic tips and sit in your home, as Harshad was telling, sit in my home with my laptop, put in a VR headset and maneuver through the vessels and, uh, you know, when somebody just makes a puncture and puts a robot in, and then I can sit in my home or anywhere on a holiday or on a plane and, and just maneuver it and then, you know, put the coil in or maybe have the AI to tell me what is the best scenario, but what is the best thing to do in this kind of a scenario. So, you know, this is what we're thinking of. So it, uh, I know about this effort that Siemens is making. The future is definitely for neurosurgery very, very bright. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Hey, any more comments or questions from anybody in the panel? We'd like to hear from other people. How about Dr. Bido from the Dominican Republic? Are you there, Ariel? Yes, I'm here. Uh, I'd like you to meet Ike Cherian from, uh, from Karan, uh, Karan, India. Yeah, uh, I want to congratulate uh, Dr. Sherian. I've seen a lot of conference on YouTube about the exoscope and all the innovations in her surgery. And I want to ask him how long time has he, has he been uh, using these technologies like exoscope and hyperscope and all, the, all the, these things? Okay, Ariel, thank you. Uh, well, we've been invested into the idea of uh, exoscopes from 2015, 2016 onwards. That's why that's when we tried to make an exoscope at the University of Alicante. We didn't have good cameras then. We had the robot, but we didn't have good cameras. I've shown those videos many times. But then for the last one, one and a half years, I've been using the AO's exoscope uh, from Esculap and uh, um, from maybe about three months, I've been using the Indian company's exoscope. I've used it in a cadaver course first, and I'm hoping to see their prototypes very soon. So we're looking at different types of scopes, different types of cameras, and uh, different types of endoscope holders to work with the exoscope. So I would say about one, one and a half years right now. I'm from the Dominican Republic, uh, the same country from Manuel Encarnacion, ah. and I'm willing Manu to, yeah, to I'm Manu willing to try to 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 make an exoscope, but yes. I I'm looking for how to make it. We we will help you completely. We will be uh, happy to help you with uh, how we make it. After we make it, we can tell you how to do it. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, one of the things about the AI and all these things happening, things are basic in the industry, just basic industry, it's cheaper to build things. It's getting cheaper and cheaper to build things uh, ah. because there's a lot, a lot more automation. Look how much automation has already happened. And it's just starting. 
you know, for these companies that make the machines, it's going to get cheaper. Yes, absolutely. And India and China is are places where you can really make things so cheap because, yeah. you know, these companies, these countries are really blessed with uh, a lot of resources now that I feel that, I mean, I was in China last month and uh, now I'm in India. And what I'm seeing is they have so much resources that they can build. They started with cars and things like that, but phones, cars and all, but you can definitely project that kind of expertise into this. Yeah. Yeah, whoever thought we'd be seeing cars that drive themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That age. <laughs> okay, any more comments? Anybody want to jump in and meet the community? Dr. Uh, Baria, Samuel, Kaba, anybody want to say something? Marisol? You don't have to, but you can just... Uh, okay, very Vignesh good. Vignesh is here, my very, my, he was my colleague way back in Nepal. Vignesh, are you there? He's in the, in the attendees list. Samuel, are you there? Yeah, sure. Hi, Samuel. Uh, this, uh, Sam, you are Samuel from Ghana. Welcome. And, uh, Hello, welcome. And we'll be, uh, I mean, glad to be part of this um, journey. Uh, yes, in my yes. facility, we've uh, tried the, the VR, the Oculus uh, Meta Pros. We use that to do uh, together with the medical holodeck app mm. to do some few uh, visual reality uh, dissections. And but I think we need to go beyond that. And I think I'm talking to the right person, and we will need your support to go beyond that. Maybe probably I'll send you an email or yes. something, the best way. But I just don't have your email. You could just put it there and uh, I'll send I'll you an email in, and we'll see how we I'll, I'll put about. it into the I'll put it into the chat. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah it should be it should be very I mean, we would really be grateful if we can collaborate and also move a little beyond because we have we are as you say, we are hungry for uh for a change and, and uh, we'll be more than happy to be part of that change. Thanks so much and congratulations. Samuel and all the young neurosurgeons listening to me, you are the kind of people that we need. Okay. Hungry. Okay. And willing to change, wanting change. You are the kind of people that we need. So every support for you guys. Okay. That's that's what we will and we will do this journey together. I emails in the chat. Do you see it? You got that? Email? Yep, I've uh, seen. Thanks so much. Okay, Thank you. you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, very good. Any other comments uh, from anybody? A uh, big, big nest. Denshai, Denshai Lavitana, and uh, where, where is right, he from? Big, big nest. You want to say something? Hello. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, big yes, nest. Good to see you, man. Okay, he's coming in now. Maybe we'll get his camera on. Can you get your camera on there, Vignesh? Perhaps not. We've got your voice. Go ahead, Vignesh. Hello? Go ahead. Yeah, yes, Vignesh, tell me. Okay, there you yeah. are. Uh, sir? As usual, that's a great talk. And I'm listening to this hyperscope for the first time. So uh, really interesting and uh, really uh, some good ideas there. And uh, the thing is, uh, this QSA thing you were talking about, yes, we need to work on our QSAs very, uh, it is a very excellent technology, but most of the times these QSAs are not working and these companies, they don't attend to it. Mm. Uh, it is uh, these things. A white elephant in the OD most of the times. So, yeah, so we made something like a mechanical QSA. If you go to Sanma Company Chennai, uh, we've uh, I can arrange that you go there and have a look at these things. So what we are working on, we've started from a very cheap uh, prototype we brought from the internet. It's with battery operated something which we brought from the internet and it can take bone out like butter. It's crazy. 
but we brought it for about thirty dollars, you know. But that's battery operated, so we uh, are looking at it to make it a little bit more powerful, a little bit more durable, a little bit more safer, and then we'd be out with a prototype which is quite cheap. This is what we are looking at. Let us see how it goes. I think Elon Musk would speed things up. <laughs> if you gave him the problem, he would come up with a solution. Okay, okay John. Yeah. Okay, Mike, any idea of what we're going to talk about uh, the next session? Or Yeah. Uh, so the next session, I would like to talk about vascular neurosurgery in the modern era. Okay, very good. that's a good title. Okay, yeah. thanks everybody for coming and we're gonna sign off now. Yeah. Stay